by 2025. So we are looking at the challenge that is thrown upon us as the institutes of higher education, as well as uh, the torch bearers, as was correctly mentioned, for leading the nation as a progressive nation. We are the youngest nation and we will be leading in several areas in the very, very near future. When we talk about education, when we talk about the problems that education is facing, uh, we need to look at the entire ecosystem and all the stakeholders. We cannot only look at the education institute as a stakeholder, we need to look at the students as the stakeholders, we need to consider the industry as an equal stakeholder along with society for acceptance as well as the government. I think these are the five stakeholders that I feel will, will be contributing to ensuring that we are moving in the right direction when it comes to higher education. It is unfair to put the onus only on the higher education institutes. So, um, what I am very proud that I represent Team Lee Skills University, which is India's first skills university, established in a public-private partnership with the government of Gujarat. And being a uh, public part, uh, being established in a public-private partnership, it indicates that we have the sponsoring body of a very large corporate that is Team Lee Services. And why why they came into education, I think, will define the topic over here. Is when they were they set up. As they are a staffing company, India's probably largest staffing company. And when they were finding the right match between the candidate and the employer, it was found that for every 100 applicants with the right qualifications, only 5% or 5 candidates were getting the jobs or were being offered jobs. And the reason being the lack, as I mentioned, the lack of the required skill sets, as well as the mismatch in the expectations of all the stakeholders. Like, industry is now not ready to end up with underqualified or overskilled or overqualified candidates. They want a hand-in-glove match. And that requires that as higher education institutes, we look into doing what is required to ensure that we are giving output and it is accepted by the industry which is the input. Uh, these are just a few of the opening remarks that I'd like to make. I will uh, like to add in some points later on as to how or what my thought process or our thought process as a university is to look into this. But if we, what we need to understand is that the youth of today is not like the youth of yesteryear where you are looking for getting one good job and you are ready to settle down there for the rest of your life. Candidates are looking for better opportunities every day and that means that there is the scope for them to be lifelong learners. They are looking to change their skills, skill sets, enhance their skill sets as they grow and go through their journey of um, employment or self-employment, whatever they choose. And what is needed is to understand how we as higher education institutes need to move from the term pedagogy to andragogy where we are going to be addressing the needs of an adult learner. Pedagogy is where we are talking about school children. Yes, our input is from school to the university, but we are going to be faced with and are being faced with not only immediate education but also the adult education and we have to look at the industry curriculum in terms of considering what the needs of the industry are as well as the stakeholders involved including the candidates who are looking for employment. With this I uh, will request the other panelists to share their views. Uh, Ms. Uh, Rikhil Shroff, a part of this panel, unfortunately uh, is injured and could not make it. She has sent her comments, which I will take up and read uh, from for this uh, panel. So I just um, request uh, uh, our panelists to take this forward. I'll start from left to right. Ma'am, uh, I request you to share your uh, views.
thank you so much. Thanks to Chandan sir for organizing such a such a beautiful event, I must say. I am purely from academics and uh, for my organization, almost four times we have gone for the National Board of Accreditation. So, uh, going through and talking through all these entire processes, I actually feel the crux lies with the outcome-based education. Once you imbibe in your system the outcome-based education, your faculties who imbibe the course outcomes, and if you have an academic autonomy, then definitely uh, things turn more easy for you. Once you start mapping the outcomes with uh, small course outcomes to lifelong learning, all these things which we have been discussing since morning, from uh, Dr. Ami's lecture to incorporating uh, swimming in the school segment uh, so that the skills are matched, to um, I had, we had tech uh, people also from EdTech who has said who have uh, shared that yes the technology and ICT so uh, the entire day I was listening to these deliberations and I must say they have in one way or the other um, imbibed in the outcome based education so as a teacher by heart I believe that as a simple faculty if we imbibe these things in our daily teaching learning processes uh, much of the problems that we are facing will definitely cover the NBA or any board of accreditation uh, as per the Washington Accord. If you have some industry based labs in the institute, definitely they will uh, cover the gap between the industry and the students. Also internship opportunities, definitely they help out because uh, even when we teach, we incorporate experiential learning. Um, I being a communication teacher always uh, teach them by example that if we send a message from a transmitter to a receiver, the basic problem is at the receiver end because you are adding up the noise, you are transmitting the signal. So whatever you get at the receptor is what has to be focused upon. So similarly, when they go for internship opportunities, apart from skill, they learn teamwork, they learn to listen, they learn perseverance and they may incorporate uh, some life learning skills which may not be possible in a classroom teaching module. So when we talk with students who are in final year, uh, basically they are in the transformation stage of teenage to uh, being young adults. A high amount of resistance that we have towards technology and towards life science as well. So I think uh, apart from technical set, a counselling set at the institute level also is a mandatory uh, thing that we need to have at universities also because post-COVID these students are uh, a set of non-social elements who have been connected to, sorry to all the edtech people, they are all connected to computers. The computers are different and teachers are different. You cannot compare a human counsellor to a computer counsellor, how much EQ you grow up with. So they need counsellors at their end and definitely uh, coming back to the topic, yes uh, we need to bridge the gap and uh, the only bridging gap can be the institutes with upskill development both in technical and personal fronts. Thank you very much. Thank you Dr. Saxena. Um, I now request, so focusing on outcome based education and not missing on the human touch in this technology, day of technology, is um, what uh, I uh, pick up from your uh, comments. Outcome based education, um, which I would like to add, when we talk about outcome based education, it is uh, again constantly changing because the outcomes which lead to the input into the industry. Uh, is something that we have to constantly be in touch with. We need to understand that industry has to be a partner to education and that industry has to also add as a to be a classroom of, an of education. Where we talk about internships, we talk about um, apprenticeships, but we need to ensure that we are connecting with the industries and the industries are acknowledging their participation in educating and training candidates for their own needs. 
thank you, ma'am. Uh, I now request uh, Professor Ravi Kumar to uh, uh, give his uh, remarks. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks, Aurora.com Media, for arranging such a deliberation sessions. Good morning, I am hearing too. <coughs> when we talk about the industry readiness curriculum, how far the curriculum is being designed or developed based on the industry needs. I come from a campus wherein we are hybrid in nature. The technological, technical courses are being affiliated to Gujarat Technological University and the regular courses have been affiliated to Gujarat University. Now in our path, we cannot change the curriculum. But still, the industries come into our campus for the placement and they leave the comments. That's it. When I talk to the industries when they come, what are your plans so that our students be industry ready or the industry ready program can be inculcated along with the curriculum of the university. But they come, they select some people, they don't select some people and go away. Now what is our stand on that? So I thank Gujarat Technological University. They started a program called as Center for Continuing Education, wherein the industry needs something. Industry works. In 90s, they started finishing school, finishing school syllabus like that. And there, only the soft skills were taught, communication skills, teamwork, all this were taught. But now, the scenario has been changed. Now, the industry needs the specific knowledge along with the soft skills. They need the specific knowledge. Say, for example, a commerce graduate, he completes his graduation, but there is no tally taught to him in the entire curriculum. The industry needs the tally. That is a must for a commerce graduate for the, for the accountancy. Now, what is to be done for that? Then we took up a challenge that we, in the continuing education program, along with the curriculum, we start a tally along with the course. So that by the end of their degree, they will be ready with the degree certificate as well as a certificate from the university in a continuing education as a tally. Now the same thing happens to the nursing also. We have nursing as a part. Nursing, when a nurse comes out of the nursing degree, again they need, the hospitals need some specialization, like they have critical care unit. They, they need some specialization. So for that also we started one course. Then they need mother, mother child care unit. For that they need a specialization. Again we started a unit. So this is what we are approaching to the industry needs so that along with the curriculum we start up this. And this again financially it should be viable to the students because they are ready to pay only the fees, not the extra fees. Again we request that the industry please do it in a discounted rate. If at all it is going for 5000 or 10000 make it 2000 so that the institute or the campus or the management will substitute or subsidize that particular program. So the, what the industry needs is they want the, stu the student or the pressure or an employee to be innovative. That is one thing. That innovation should come and they should be pursuing and honing the skills whatever they are perfect in or studied in and work in the weak, weak areas of their own. Then the community development, collective criticism should be accepted by the employee. So all these things are come under soft skills. Along with that, these technical skills also to be added so that the industry will absorb the student. And for these courses, I don't take the teachers of the university. I ask the industry people come and have Come and have your own course at your own pace, at your own level, and at your own level, so that the students will understand the industry and they will be ready for your particular industry. That is my contribution for now. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Ravi Kumar. Yes, uh, getting industry, as I mentioned, as to partner with academic institutes and organizations and um, is the need of the hour. Also, I think that the need of the hour is also to be able to have dynamic curriculum 
uh, evolution to ensure that we are adding the skill sets as are required by the industry. Thank you so much. I now requ request uh, Dr. H. N. Shah to please uh, give his point of view. Uh, thank you very much, Madam. Now, New Normal 2022 is the title of this summit. So, New Normal, this word came after the pandemic or post-COVID. Now, the, after COVID, the entire life of the individuals have changed. Even our thought process has also changed. So now, how we are come up with the new things or good things for the betterment of the society or for the betterment of the industry or for the uh, uh, to uh, strengthen our nation. So that is uh, more important. Here, the just I'm narrowing my uh, uh, talk or uh, focus on this uh, uh, topic only, the industry ready curriculum. So, vastly affected uh, the sector was uh, academic uh, in the, uh, uh, during the COVID situation. And the people were, uh, those, those who were in the academics, they, were, they, they are right now in the fear of uncertainty. Post COVID, what will be the situation? Because of the initially our mindset is not ready for to take a new challenge. So post COVID, what happened? The, even 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 our faculty members were not ready for uh, uh, to adopt the new technology, uh, uh, digitalization uh, of their uh, uh, lectures or video. Uh, uh, contained or so our adaptability agility is very much essential here this is one part uh, related to academics similarly in uh, industry also rapid change in the requirement after post covid uh, rapid change in the technology and adaptability by the uh, uh, this business houses or in the industry personnel uh, the, they force us, they force the academics to change the curriculum rapidly. And, and accordingly you change the methodology also. In the, uh, we cannot concern the students now uh, in, in a full wall of uh, uh, this classroom. We have to make open platform. See, in our, our Gandhian University, our campus is Wi-Fi. Uh, so each and every corner, uh, the students get the uh, main connectivity. Now here, if we are, what we are doing right now, from the third semester itself, we are just uh, identifying their capabilities. And we are, accordingly, we are giving them an uh, open platform. And we are more focusing on the practical aspects. So these three things we are uh, trying to club. Practical aspects, openness environment, and we have to give them freedom for to do uh, uh, some sort of uh, uh, in a critical thinking way. So, in a third semester, one design thinking uh, subject is there. Uh, as per the GTU syllabus and uh, even our curriculum also it is there. So, we are allowing the students to think in a different way. Every time, suppose one problem we are giving to the students and there are uh, 10 to uh, 12 students, a uh, group is there. We are allowing the students to note down the different solutions of that particular problem. So in different way, the students are thinking. So from third semester itself, we are allowing them and we are nurturing them. Uh, so when they came into, uh, uh, coming into final year, uh, final semester, uh, they are coming with some sort of different innovative product. So at the end of the day, uh, uh, we could be able to uh, submit uh, uh, 14 papers last year uh, because of such kind of uh, practice in the uh, academics. Even the intensive is also, intensive and uh, uh, industry training, 
that plays also very important role because of uh, unless we uh, 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 just uh, touch the things we cannot uh, feel what from uh, which material it is we are right so unless these students uh, 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 take the exposure uh, in the uh, uh, industrial soft core uh, people will uh, cannot understand the what is the environment what are all the technical skills right so they will understand understand themselves first they will come up with the what are the present requirement of the industry right so all aspects we have to uh, 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 in a uh, in a scientific way we are uh, we have to uh, follow and we have to nurture the students as per uh, their requirement thank you Was, has been a concept in schools. Uh, the new concept in schools is experiential learning that has to be extended to the um, young adult and um, the student of higher education as well so that they can experience uh, not only the requirement of the industry but also can engage in critical thinking from day one. So that is uh, what is very important. I will now uh, read uh, the uh, comments that I have received from Ms. Shroff on uh, today's topic. So, um, employers are increasingly looking for graduates with strong skills rather than focusing on the prestige of the university they attended. Therefore, it is imperative for all universities to have employability skills framework, which is reflected in all course and subject objectives. As skills, values and attributes are developed continuously by students through activities on and off campus and online, this should en encompass curriculum base as well as co- and extracurricular initiatives. University can include a mandatory subject in the first year such as careers in, cu in the curriculum which includes awareness of one uh, of oneself, dynamic labor, market and employer expectations, evaluating one's fit across the various growth industries, creating agile career goals and project-based learning to develop transferable digital financial skills, understanding ethics and legal issues, and developing an ex-e-portfolio developing an e-portfolio. Students will have better understanding of how to maximize their time at the university and also take initiatives and responsibility for their own uh, career journey. Employer-student engagement should not be limited to just campus recruitment but also capstone and research projects, student membership and networking events organized by professional industry associations and startup incubators. The professor of practice or entrepreneur in residence could help to bridge this gap. Uh, work integrated, including internships, volunteering, community projects, industry-based learning can be embedded as credits across all degrees. And importantly, authentic assessments and progress reporting must be able to quantify what a student has learned and able to apply it in real world that skills they have mastered and evidenced through the e-portfolio. E the e-portfolio should have the graduate attributes typically not referenced in degree transcripts such as soft skills, specialist professional competencies and mega cognitive skills desired by employers. So I would um, like to thank uh, Ms. Shroff for at the last moment also sending in her uh, inputs to be incorporated in this panel discussion. Uh, I had initially said that I'd like to um, tell you what, as India's first skills university, what we are doing in terms of curriculum design as well as employability skills. We have uh, looked at a whole classroom concept where we're talking about on-campus, on-site, online and on-job training as a four different campuses where any program is offered through a minimum of two campuses, it can be all four, but one 
mandatorily being on job training. That is to say that we are ensuring that the candidate who takes up any program in a skills university has the requisite um, interaction and exposure, has learned the required skills as expected by the industry before he can get a qualification. And we work in a core qualification corridor for certificate, um, diploma, advanced diploma, and degree. This consideration is that we look at the largest require of the skilled, uh, skilled uh, man force is in the entry and entry plus one level. That is why as a skills university, we have primarily focused on degree programs. Postgraduate programs is something that we we'll look into a little later because the requirement of the industry says that we want moldable manpower who can understand the industry. There is a certain amount of learning that is going to happen on the industry, in the industry. So apart from our regular campus programs, we are actively engaging in apprenticeship programs under the NEEM and the NAP scheme, where apprentices are enrolled into higher education and along with their apprenticeship or learning on the job, they are also getting a, the exposure of knowledge, domain knowledge, practical knowledge and the skill sets that all will lead to the um, obtaining a particular qualification, the highest being a degree because the apprenticeship duration is from 3 to 36 months as per the guidelines. So we are looking at various models where we are talking about learning by doing, okay, learning, it, modular learning, we are talking about learning anywhere and anytime because the youth today have so much access to, to information in various forms in the form of technology wherever they are. So if a candidate is looking into getting employed during the day, has access to studies, knowledge, to education, while he is not on the job, gives a very, very different outlook to the way we need to be looking at education henceforth considering that we are looking at it as a journey because as I said, we are looking at candidates who are constantly upgrading their skills. What makes the curriculum that we designed different is that um, we have ensured that we have put in all industry re relevant curriculum designed by the industry experts but we have not only let it stop at the design part. What happens is where, where you get stuck or where the execution takes place is only when you are going to realize whether your model is working or it has failed. So by having the on-job training as a mandatory classroom, it is not only where a candidate goes to the workplace, does something or does not do something and comes back for a stipulated time period. We ensure that that on-job training is evaluated. It is evaluated not only by the university but also by the industry expert. So what happens is the industry expert will come back to us or the industry mentor will come back to us and tell us like this is lacking in your candidate or in your curriculum and this is what is working. So that gives us continuous input into the requirements of the industry with the changes that are happening at such a rapid pace. Another thing that we have done in our curriculum is made mandatory across all programs is the employability skills. You talk about domain skills, you talk about the theory and the practical that is required, but employability skills, be it English, communication skills, personality development, job skills, or computer skills and office administration, and last but not the least, but entrepreneurship skills and applications are mandatory part across all programs. So what we have done is we have tried to ensure that before the candidate reaches the industry, he has exposure to what it is going to be like when he goes there. A lot of times we have seen that candidates after higher education and their first day into the industry, there is a total mismatch. The industry constantly feels that if I am going to have to put in another six months to train this candidate, then what was the point of looking for the qualification? That is why they are focusing on soft skills and focusing on adaptability of a candidate to take, take them up as um, 
employees in their organization. So um, these are just some of the things that we have done. Um, as uh, Dr. Ravi Kumar said that you have approached the industry for talent. For us, we are offering a BCom because we are we have not gone taken up the BWOC route as a skills university. We have looked at the traditional nomenclature but ensured that they are skill based. So we have put tally as a mandatory part of BCOM. Uh, because that is the skill as you correctly said, that that is the skill set that the employer is looking for. So a lot of theories or a lot of um, subjects which are not relevant today, just covering up the basis so that they have a good foundation and understanding of the evolution of concept is what is very important, but we need to be able to make space for new subjects. What happens in higher education or institutions or in the curriculum is we are so fixated on continuing telling them what was relevant 50 years ago, we don't have space in their time frame to tell them what is relevant today. So I think that when we look at curriculum revision, we need to be looking into making space for relevant skill sets. Can, can I add some please, points please, on this? See, see, whenever you are talking about the skill sets that you are adding up in the curriculum, now in the earlier technical session also somebody was pointing out that institute and industry, they are two ends of the ocean. They should be, the gap should be bridged. Who takes the first step? Now, industry has, doesn't have any futuristic plans that so many should be employed, so many hands are required by them. And institute doesn't have the plan that so many should be graduated. Everybody is taking up the business model only. Nobody is thinking of the students now. Nobody is thinking of the graduates that are coming out of the universities and how many are employed. See, 70 to 75 percent of the students will be employed only. Hardly 25 percent will go for the startup or other businesses of their fathers or go for other businesses. So now, it is up to the industry because 75 percent of the population of the graduates that are coming out of the universities and the institution should be employed. It takes the responsibility of the industry that there should be a proper coordination between the universities and themselves. So the universities before framing a curriculum, they should call the industries and see that how this can be adapted in the curriculum. Again after two to, two to three years, the technology improves, that courses become obsolete. So industry should be in continuous touch with the universities and the institutes so that whatever the changes they want, there will be optional of optional subjects also or elective subjects. At least in those subjects, they can add up the subjects of their own or one thing that university can make is, this is just a suggestion as a proposal which came to my mind. If it is a four years degree, then first year the student will learn what actually he's, he wants to learn or he should learn. Two years, you give him the knowledge of that particular department or the branch or the technology. One year, you give it to the industry. Let the industry take care of the student the final year so that they can have the training as they want as relevant and that those can be employed. If not employed by that industry, the knowledge what the student has gained, he can be employed with the other industry. That's what I'm doing in the thing. You come. You teach the students whatever the uh, specific knowledge your industry needs. If at all you take, you observe the students or else they will be ready for the other industry. At least they have the knowledge of that particular technology. This is what the industry should take up. Oh, it's already a bell. Industry should take up one step ahead to go to the universities and see that, yes, this is what we want because your students are not in power. Somebody was telling in the earlier session that the students are all not industry ready. That should be done until and unless industries come forward, we cannot change anything in the curriculum or the university syllabus is concerned. Thank you. Yes, we have to meet halfway. I just wanted to ask if anyone could respond to this question on the professor of practice that has been recently declared as uh, an acceptable post with, for professionals who have great experience in uh, the industry to bring them into the um, bring bring them into the teaching fraternity and bring them. <coughs>
face to face with the student. What do you, what are your views on uh, professor professional practice and how practical uh, will it be? May I? Please, please, ma'am. Uh, yeah, being in academics, you be in a particular field, you are in a monotonous phase. So uh, maybe we are not exposed to industry, we are not exposed to the real time problems, we are not exposed to targets, we do not inculcate the same in our students. And earlier also, 10 years ago, AICT allowed uh, people from industry, DHL and other Narvata companies to come down to and talk to the students to have a different view of what the industry expects from them. So that is what I need to answer. Secondly, I want to speak on what Mr. Ms. Rachelle has put the inputs. Uh, institutes of importance like IITs and NITs, when campus interviews come in their uh, segment, the students who are leading as techniques, they are directly taken away because they have either organized an event and organizing an event leads them to the uh, lifelong, uh, lifelong learning qualities of team building, sponsorship, managing, time management, perseverance, so they think that they are well ahead. So ma'am has given a very good suggestion that definitely we should have a, a module in which a student's participation in the curricular activities uh, uh, must be reflected so that uh, his or her qualities can be counted on for. So thank you. Thank you. Would you like to add something please? Yes, so professor in practice is definitely you see the team of Kiti good uh, Scheme and uh, definitely the institute will get the benefit uh, from the uh, this uh, experts from uh, the industries. See, actually, this uh, uh, here the degree is not mandatory. PhD degree is not mandatory for the those who are in the uh, practice or industry. So that is very correct. In fact, uh, uh, the uh, what what exactly we are doing in the our research? Uh, we are just uh, integrating all the. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, knowledge or information we have, uh, uh, or we have studied uh, during the uh, graduation or post graduation, and we are just uh, incorporating in the uh, research. We are applying that. So, similarly, this uh, professor in practice, the person, what uh, exactly doing? The after graduation, uh, they are doing practice and they came up uh, with the number of uh, dynamic uh, uh, situations, dynamic problems in, uh, during their career. So, this is they, they are also as good as a PhD degree or they are at work. So definitely uh, uh, if they have interactions with the, our uh, students or even our faculty members, uh, the things will be the, uh, beneficial for the, uh, our, the students. Thank you. Um, due to the paucity of time, there is so much that can be said and so much that has been said. I'd like to um, conclude over here thanking the uh, panel, my esteemed panel members for the fruitful discussion and I hope that the audience have um, enjoyed this discussion and taken back something. Uh, do we have time for questions from the audience? Do we have any time for questions from the audience? Is there anyone that would ha that has a question for this panel? Um, I think uh, everyone's had a long day of deliberations <laughs> and uh, a lot has been covered, a lot has been covered in various formats. Like a lot of repetition has, uh, like a lot of repetition has happened in, form, in different formats. But I'd like to uh, thank all of you for your patient hearing and I'd also like to thank the organizers once again on behalf of the panel for uh, initiating such a discussion where we're talking about the future and how as academic institutes, we can and definitely will impact the growth of our country. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I request all of you to be on the stage. And now I request to Mr. Chandan to present the certificate of appreciation to our all the panelists and panel monitor.
प्रोफेसर अब्दी कुमार आवर पेन मॉडरेटर एंड डॉक्टर मीनल सक्सेना डायरेक्टर ऑफ द सागर इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ रिसर्च एंड टेक्नोलॉजी भोपाल थैंक यू सो मच एवरीवन Let's take a group photo with your certificates. Thank you very much all of you. So next uh, we have a award ceremony but before we begin it uh, we are taking a 15 minute of tea break. Thank you.